We're going to try to make this one of the best uh, sessions of all because we want to re really get down to the real nitty gritty here. And I have on the panel some really talented people that are in the middle of running some pretty impressive talent acquisition functions. So we're going to ask some tough questions, um, talk to them a little bit about some of the issues that are going on in their area as it relates to change. You were discussing your whole philosophy on whole, the whole change management and the problems that come from it. As it relates to um, change, you say that um, companies always think more and work more on the, on, the, uh, on the why we need to do the change rather than the how we're going to do the change. You just have to put a plan together and communicate effectively and you have to constantly, constantly communicate. Once I understand the culture of that company, I, I create a communication plan of, and start building an awareness program and, and an, ed an education plan to educate them about the change. And it's been extremely successful. We bring the recruiters and the business partners together, and we do role responsibility and clarity of those roles. Because, you know, I got the recruiters come to me going, man, the generalists won't let me do an offer letter. They won't let me do an offer, negotiate an offer with a candidate. They don't want us to know comp, but we know all the comp. Um, and the, the generalists are coming to me going, your recruiters got to deliver on their reports and, and their metrics and, and establish credibility with me. You got to get them working together. You got to collaborate. The first thing I did at REM is I met with the VP of the business partners and we, got, we were on the spot, same page, day one. She goes, I don't want my business partners working on recruiting activities. I want them to be strategic advisors to the businesses. I want the business to have the best impact of their advice and knowledge of where we're going. We all have those folks. We all have them in our organizations. In every organization I've been in, that generalist or that recruiter that doesn't want to change. They want to do it their way, and you got to do something about that. One of the things that you have been going through was a change from a decentralized environment to this whole COE or that center of excellence. So question for you, Vicki. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that change and specifically what you shared with us to talk about overcoming the resistance and objections from people and who those people were. The main resistance was, you, as some of you alluded to yesterday, the HR folks in the field that had been handling recruitment before, suddenly that was going to be taken from them. We did a lot around really trying to get people involved uh, with this process from the very beginning to minimize the change uh, resistance and really getting their ideas, practical ideas, where their pain points are. Um, did a lot with voice of the customer with the senior leaders. I had focus groups going on with the hiring managers and HR. Um, just really trying to get a lot of input so that when we put this out and really made it uh, for launch, it was gonna be as successful as possible. When we felt there were perceptions out there getting in the way, we would put it in a little kind of a recap of the month, myth of the month. So something along the lines of HR is only there to interview, not to collaborate on the search. That was an example of a myth that we had out there. And then we would just dispel that and try to kind of get some of those uh, concerns out on the table. Now, Aziz, you've been um, at Baker Hughes uh, only for about five or six months now. You too had inherited, when you came to Baker Hughes, this whole transition from a uh, decentralized recruiting environment to a center of excellence, center of expertise kind of environment. The challenge from the change environment or the change management process was we didn't really think about what that meant. So we said to a lot of folks, hey, we now have a recruiting center and they're going to answer all your problems. They're going to be able to take care of a lot of your issues. Uh, but we didn't take enough time to educate our clients on what that meant, what they should expect, what they can't expect. We didn't take any time internally to tell people, this is what your role is, this is what you should focus on, this is not what you should focus on. And we didn't take into account the cultural change that was really happening. And the fact that we were asking people to do something very different than what they had done in the past. For us, it was about being very clear why we were moving to a centralized model so that people understood we're doing this to either uh, save money or we're doing this to ensure consistent practice. But you make sure that that mantra is very clear. The other thing is realizing that just because it's centralized doesn't mean everyone is sitting together. Centralized means that there could be a group of people that have a common goal and that they understand that their leader is one person and that person is driving those goals. Change is an emotional thing. 
for many people. And emotions, they're the greatest things about being people, but it's also the difficult thing about being people. You see the fear on the people's face. The stress is just visible. People are working. I mean, everything that we see and read about in the media, and I picked up personally before, before Christmas and called every one of my employees, told them how much I appreciated them, told them much, you know, how I appreciated their contributions, I knew what their contributions were, not to worry that their jobs were safe through Christmas and, and, and in, the near, in the near future, but I, asked, I was absolutely transparent about the business, about what's going on. I told them everything I know.